Golden Tigers fans, get ready. It's time for Buckets, Blocks, Spills, Thrills, Steals, and Slams. Thunder! Tuskegee Basketball is next on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Now, let's go courtside with the call. Here's Charles Ward. And welcome, everybody. We are live courtside here at Chappie James Center getting set for Golden Tigers Basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Charles Ward alongside Dwayne Walker with the play call. And walk. we turn our attention to the second ball game in a four-home set here for Tuskegee. This afternoon, it's the Tigers of Benedict College visiting this afternoon. And in women's action, it'll be Coach Wester and the Golden Tigers meeting a team that's coming in at 2-9. Well, listen, Coach Wester and the Golden Tigers coming off a huge victory uh, two days ago. They find themselves today playing against a tough ball club in the Benedict Tigers. Don't take for granted a 2-9 record. It's conference play, Charles, and every game is uh, important, and you can't underestimate anybody. They come into this ball game, the Golden Tigers do, after an impressive performance against the Yellow Jackets of Allen University on Thursday. Some of the takeaways from that ball game. Wow, just poised execution down the stretch, and the players that needed to step up, stepped up. Uh, Ariel McElroy stepped up late in the second half, as well as Brittany Bolin. She was incredible all game long. She hit five three-point baskets, Charles, to lead this Golden Tigers club with 22 points. First four she tried, she made them from behind the arc. And as you talked about Ariel McElroy, at the end of the ball game, not a lot of quantity as it relates to points, but hers were so quality. And the other things she did outside of scoring in the latter part of that ball game really made the difference. She showed her leadership down in the clutch. A little labor, not feeling well. A couple girls not feeling well. Uh, Samaya Abdur Rahim not feeling well, but they still stepped up to the plate and they delivered down the stretch. You talk about Rahim. She came off of the bench in the ball game on Thursday and shot the lights out. Double digits in points. She ended up with 12 points in the game. And what can you say about uh, uh, Samaya Abdur Rahim? No relation. <laughs> you can say that for sure. <laughs> well, the relation tonight is they want to relate to what they did on Thursday in the ball game against the Tigers of Benedict today. We'll see how they fare as we get set for basketball action. More to come on the Golden Tigers Sports Network after this time out. I'm Reginald Ruffin, your director of athletics, and you are watching the Golden Tigers Sports Network. STEM careers are one of the fastest growing fields, yet women of color comprise less than 10% of the workforce within these high paying jobs. Tuskegee University is changing this. In 2018, we were awarded a grant from the National Science Foundation to develop computer science career awareness for young African American women. In 2019, we established the Campaign for Leadership and Excellence Scholarship. It provides future female engineers with financial support to pursue their educational goals. Today, Tuskegee continues to educate African American women in STEM fields, empowering them to pursue their chosen careers and providing the foundation they need to transform science, medicine, and technology. If a STEM career is in your future, explore what Tuskegee can offer you. And welcome back, everybody, inside Chappie James Center, getting set for basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. We are in the pregame, and that means we're joined by the head coach of Golden Tigers basketball, Siante Wester. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me once again. Talk about this ball game against Benedict College. Let's reflect back, first of all, to the contest on Thursday against the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. You referenced it was a scrappy ball game, indeed it was, but your ladies came out on top. Yes, they, they, like I said, they, they came out in the down the stretch and hit some clutch shots on some big threes and made some good plays. And we got some defensive stops down the stretch, so that kind of helped us. Kind of a ball game that really played into the strength of your teams, working it on the inside. Got some great work there, and the guard play was just phenomenal. Yes, Brittany and Samaya both stepped up. Um, Two nice jumpers, mid-range and three-point shots. So they helped us down the stretch a lot. And then uh, 
going into the post to be able to get five, get the and ones that we wanted. So that was that was great. Well, we were kind of joking about it prior to the last ball game about Samaya coming off of the bench in that six person role. Yes. They just performed extremely well coming off the bench in the contest. Yeah, she's a little more comfortable with that role. Um, where she get to read and see what's going on in the game so she could relax a little bit and then come in and, and play. You meet a team today in the Tigers of Benedict College. They are struggling a bit in the first half of the season, but a potent program overall on the Coach Rice. You know he's always got some strategy coming into this ball game. What do you expect to see from them this afternoon? I'm expecting to see a lot of uh, aggression from them, a lot of traps, little, little sneak plays, different traps. You like, like you said, it's Coach Rice. So he's a veteran coach, um, so he, he probably have a scheme going on. But we're looking for them to press us a lot. Um, they, they feed off of their defense, so they, they play uh, extremely good defense for 40 minutes. So we, we, we're looking to see that. This is the second ball game of a four-game homestand for us here inside of Chappie James. Let's go back to the first ball game against the Yellow Jackets. I know at the end of the contest, you always get that impact belt. Yes. And who got the impact belt for the Yellow Jackets ball game? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to surprise everybody and let them know right now. This is on our impact player. How you doing, hey, Brittany, glad you could join us. Impact player from the last ball game. Let's dress you up there. <laughs> we we uh, give it out to everyone that we have. We give it out to somebody who made the impact of that game for us. So I was lucky enough to work for it last game, and my plan is to keep it for this game. You're not going to give it back, huh? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You no. had 23 in the ball game on yeah. Thursday. Started out hitting your first three, four, four point basket, three point basket before four. Yes, sir. Were you just feeling that rhythm or was I, it something you just kind of fell um, into? I think my game plan for that game was to just let the game come to me instead of forcing the game, uh, instead of forcing the game. So yeah, I had my little flow. Um, I was hot the whole game, try to get everybody, uh, try to get everybody their own shots, but when you're on fire, you're on fire. <laughs> Gotta take it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brittany Boland joining us here in pregame. Brittany, thanks for joining us. Good luck here yes, in the ball game this you. afternoon. Thank you. Coach Wester getting used to this type of stuff here. Yeah, thanks right. for bringing her on. Anytime, anytime. She's, she's a leader. She, like I said, she's my coach on the floor, so I depend a lot on her. And, and she's accepting that role. She's stepping up, so I'm really appreciative. Okay. Well, they're going to be depending on you from the sideline yes. as you get set to meet the Tigers of Benedict College. Best of luck in the contest this afternoon. Yes, sir. Thank you. At Coach Yante Wester as they get set to meet the Tigers of Benedict College. That's just ahead here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Golden Tiger fans, I'm Gerald Long, General Manager of the Utilities Board of Tuskegee. Thank you for watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Go Tigers! From us at the Tuskegee University Bookstore. Thank you for watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Shop exclusive TU gear in store or online at TuskegeeUniversityShop.com. Go Tigers! Hey, future business leader, launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University, we get the business of business education. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington said, excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to one average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. Hi, I'm Shiante Wester, head women's basketball coach, and this is the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Hey, future business leader, launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University, we get the business of business education. Thank you. 
And welcome inside. Chappie James Arena, Charles Ward, Dwayne Walker with the play call, getting set for an afternoon of basketball on the campus of Tuskegee University. Golden Tigers of Tuskegee getting set to host the Tigers of Benedict College in women and men's action. Women getting set to hit the floor right now. Starting lineups being introduced here inside the arena by the reliable public address announcer, Paul Carney from Tuskegee University. For the Lady Tigers of Benedict College, they will shape it up this way with the starting five. It'll be Alea Nash, the freshman from Taylor's, North Carolina, starting at one of the guard positions. Seven points, 2.9 rebounds per outing for Nash. She'll be joined by Raven Johnson, the freshman from Blythewood, South Carolina. Johnson, 7.7 .7 points per ball game, leads the team in rebounding with a total of blocks in terms of seven total in that category, 10th in the conference there for Johnson. Kaya Evans, the senior from St. Thomas Virgin Islands, will start this afternoon for the Lady Tigers of Benedict College. She averages 5.2 points per ball game and 2.4 rebounds. And it'll be Jalissa Knowles, the junior from Forest Park, Georgia. Normally wears number 23, but she'll be outfitted in number 15 for this afternoon's play. She averages 8.5 points per ball game and 1.5 rebounds. And rounding out the five for the Tigers of Benedict College, it's Taylor Christmas. It's not Christmas, past Christmas, but she'll be on the floor here in January. The junior from Decatur, Georgia, leads the team in scoring 11.5 points per ball game and 3.8 rebounds per outing for Christmas. So those are the five for the Tigers of Benedict College, coached by James Rice. He's in his 12th season, a three-time SIAC Coach of the Year. Now starting lineup for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee, Ariel McElroy, the senior from Bowling Brook, Brook Illinois. She'll start. 11.3 points per outing for her. Sine Bobbitt, the junior from Colleen, Texas, starts this afternoon at 2.1 rebound in the ballgame on Thursday. Michaela, Michaela McGleek, the senior from Houston, out on the floor, as is Aaliyah Austin and Brittany Boland, the impact player of the ballgame on Thursday, out as well. 23 points for her in Thursday's outing. Officials, Tyrell Johnson, Whitney Niles, and John McMillan with the call, and we are underway. Half court set for the Lady Tigers of Benedict. They come in at two and nine overall and one and five in SIAC play. That's a rare statement about a team coached by James Rice. And they're offering out front. The first one of the afternoon is off the mark. The basketball over to Tuskegee. All right, Charles, as this game begins, watch for the full court pressure here by Benedict. They want to see right off the bat whether or not your guards can handle. So that will be the early test here. Bolin with it in the backcourt, over to McElroy. Now across the timeline, left side. Middle of the floor, McElroy has it there, whistles, and they get her for a travel violation, trying to slide it left side. Charles, that's all part of their strategy. They want to get you rattled early. They do it on both the men and women's side. First turnover of the ball game for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Tracking right now at 16.5 turnovers per ball game on the season. Half court set for Benedict. First meeting of these teams this year. Left side whistles at the block and uh, travel violation against the Lady Tigers. Knowles trying to find space left side. Tried to do it by taking an extra step. Just in the way, first period action. Glad you could join us on a Saturday afternoon from Tuskegee, Alabama. Malik handles right side, works off of a screen by Austin. Bolin doubled out top McElroy for three. Spinner is good. For yes, McElroy. sir. Yes, sir, Charles. McElroy getting off to a hot start to begin things here. She puts the first three on the board. Ariel, 10 points, eight rebounds, four assists in Thursday's win. And the Tigers half court set have to run it down in the corner. Whistles. All right, Charles, an issue with the clock. The clock didn't wind down. But, Charles, if I am the Golden Tigers, I'm trying to run up and down the court to get their top scorer, Taylor Christmas, out of the game. She'll be the sub, first sub this afternoon for Benedict College. But it's important that you get her out by running up and down the floor. You want to get her off immediately. Christmas, the first team all-conference player for the Tigers of Benedict, 11.5 points per ball game, 17th in the conference in scoring. And she handles out front. Now on the move, this is Johnson in the paint floater. Left side, she missed that one. Bobbitt with her first rebound of the ball game. 
Outlet pass McElroy across the timeline. Tuskegee with an early 3-0 lead. 8-10 remains first period. Down in the corner, Bobbitt's 3 for 3. Bangs it home for the Golden Tigers. Bang! Gotta love it, Charles Ward. She's yeah. picking up where she left off the other night against Allen. Bobbitt with her first points of the ball game. Seven points per ball game average for Sine. Tuskegee with a 6-0 lead. Now make it 6-2 as a floater. Right left side by Nash is good. So Alea Nash got the first two for Benedict. Near the mid stripe. Bobbitt behind the arc. Left side had it partially deflected by Christmas. And they will get her for the foul. So Christmas picks up her first. That's what we want, Charles. We want to get her immediately out of the game. And as I mentioned, Charles, here she comes. Taylor Christmas is checking out of the ball game as the first substitute. Well, this is what we'll see all afternoon from head coach James Rice. He is a very liberal substitute in basketball play. He's known for going in with five, giving him a few minutes, going in another five, and that's the rhythm he's used to. But talking to him in pregame, he said, well, right now, they are our new team, and I'm a new coach for most of them, so we're just trying to get to know each other. I don't even really have an idea at this point which personnel is really going to be the best performers for me. So early parts of the season, normally that's the case for a lot of teams in terms of getting the jail to go, but he's even a step further back than that, just trying to determine who the right personnel is. So a bigger challenge for him and the Tigers in this early half of the season. Two and nine on their start. Tuskegee with a 7-2 lead. Half court set and a travel violation there. Amaya Gallman, the junior from Columbia, South Carolina, guilty of the travel. So we see turnovers coming into play here. Listen, the Tigers turn it over a whopping 27 times per game. You see that two and that seven on the score there? 27, combine those numbers. Those are the turnovers that Benedict commits per game. It makes the turnovers by gold, the Golden Tigers look lightweight. Indeed, that 27 is strong, man. Gosh. Difficult to win basketball games with that many TOs in a contest. Back to the defense, McElroy backing in, now trapped near the sideline. Up top two, Bowling free, fires a three, drains a three for the Golden Tigers. Ha <laughs> ha Charles. Three three-point baskets already by this Golden Tiger squad. Picking right up where she left off, walking the last ball game, hit her first four on Thursday. Knocks down her first three-pointer here. Right side. Daniels, the junior. Now they push it out. Jumper out front by Amaya Ashby, the senior on the floor. She missed. Backside rebound and put back by Gallman is off the mark as well. Here comes McElroy. Left side. They didn't pick her up. The floater to the glass. Missed on the shot, though. Ariel just kept going and going and going. Nobody came out defensively. Had a little short floater left side. Just not able to knock that one down. Gallman out front with the basketball for Benedict. Now this is Daniels with it circling near the top. Shot clock already at seven for Benedict. And they hoist one from outside. That scales and scales barely tip the scale there in terms of hitting the rim. And Tuskegee will have the basketball. Bowling across the timeline now. Brittany kicks left side McElroy. Ariel on the move. Back up top to Bowling. Entry pass inside to Jasmine. Got some good space there on the inside and a good hard first step there by Emmanuel to get what that basket. What recognition to get the ball inside to the lower po post for Jasmine Emmanuel who gets on the board for the first time tonight. So Jasmine picking up where she left off. 5.4 rebounds on Thursday. 6.7 points per ball game average for her. As Abdul Rahim's out on the floor now defensively. Shot in the right corners off the mark by Scales. Samaya handles the basketball across the timeline. She had 15 on Thursday and now adds her first two of this contest. She would not be denied, Charles. Not showing any effects from that sinus situation from a couple nights ago. Her first two of the contest. On the move now. This is Daniels to the rack. Yes. Missed on her shot. 
Excellent job by Jasmine Manuel to rotate over to the defense. And Charles Manuel is getting up the court quite easily right now. She looks like she's playing herself into condition. She looks great right now. They try to dump it down low to her at the right box. She's there and had it taken away trying to throw it across the floor to Boland. Turnover to Benedict. 420 left first period. Tuskegee with a 14-2 lead. Out front for the three-pointer. Nothing but the bottom on that one for Scales. So Scales knocks down a three-pointer. Her first points of the ball game, a blocking foul back the other way. Bobbitt on the penetration right side. Call that foul, I believe they called it on Christmas on the inside. She's not out on the, she was out on the floor. They, I think they gave it to her walk. We'll see. Time out on the floor. We'll figure that out. When we come back, we'll let you know who the assessment was against. 405 remains first period. Tuskegee with a 14-5 lead. Hi, I am Lily Lanier, president of the Tuskegee National Alumni Association. And you're watching the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Thank you. Hey, future business leader. Launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University, we get the business of business education. Booster Digital Displays is a proud sponsor of Tuskegee University basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. As the exclusive provider of the digital scores table here inside Chappie James Center and the new state-of-the-art Jumbotron and scoreboard at Cleve Abbott Stadium, Booster Digital Displays is committed to boosting Tuskegee athletics to the next level. For more information on the affordable and innovative Booster D Digital Displays product line, visit www.boosterdisplays.com. Charles, as we come back to action, we might need some booster seats cross court. I see some middle schoolers, schooler <laughs> basketball players over there from Macon County. We might need a, two rows of booster seats over there for those young fellas. Well, they don't need a boost from Bolin because Bolin just gave them another triple from outside. <laughs> and that got them moving in the seats across the floor. So she's back to back triples for Tuskegee. Really finding her range here in the confines of the home court. Struggled a bit on the road in the early half of the season, but just burst out on Thursday here. Take away in a half court set and a foul in the backcourt. That turnover was caused by, well, not turnover, that foul. They're going to give it to Jazz Emanuel, but you got to give credit to Brittany Bowen for getting her hand in there to deflect that basketball. And correction, that foul is going to go against the uh, Benedict Tigers. It went to number 30, uh, Jamila 13. Bennett. Excuse me. Yeah, Bennett hit with that foul. So good defensive work. They're indicating 33 on the scoreboard. Lester. Riaja uh, Lester guilty of the foul. Abdur Rahim back the other way to the rack. Missed on the lay in, but the rebound and put back. Manuel not able to do that. Trinity Layton, the freshman, got a third look at it, but not able to put it down. Jumper out front, rattled by Ashby, way behind the arc for the Lady Tigers. Second three-point basket of the game for the Tigers. For their eighth point of the game, they trail it by nine. Surprised that the Tigers are continuing on with that press when the Golden Tigers have shown that they can break it with relative ease. Raven Johnson got that rebound, runs the floor back the other way, but missed on a lay-in. Jasmine clears for Tuskegee. Walker, the last bit, trip down the floor, they gave that foul to Lester, Briasia Lester. Oh, 33, got you. Half court set for Tuskegee now. Bolin, two of two from behind the arc. 10 to shoot. Lost the dribble, trying to go inside and throw it right away. Good defensive effort there by Ashby just to get the hands up in the passing lane and the basketball, lo and behold, came right to her. 2.06 left first period of play. Tuskegee with a 17-8 lead. Down on the left side, all the way in. That's Raven Johnson for the lay in for the Lady Tigers. Manuel got caught a little flat-footed on that one, Charles, and she was beaten to the bucket. 
Malik across the timeline with the basketball. Works it down in the corner. Across the paint and a whistle. Not sure what that call was at the baseline. Looks like it's going to go over to the Lady Tigers of Benedict. I think maybe Malik stepped on the inbound line. Oh, wow. A couple of substitutions for both teams out now. Elena Roberts, the junior from Hanford, California, out on the floor now for the Golden Tigers. Austin back out as well. Half court set for the Tigers of Benedict. Knowles back out on the floor to get it in the corner to Johnson, and they throw it away. Austin grabbed it for Tuskegee. Trinity Layton, excellent job in reaching around without contact to deflect that basketball away. Cross dribble by Bolin to the glass. Can't get it to fall for left side. 65 seconds left first period. Tuskegee with a seven-point edge. Back the other way, though, easy lay-in behind the defense was Ashby for an easy basket. That was a gorgeous pass by Anaya Scale. She waited and then simply tethered that basketball into a streaking mouth. Back the other way, talk about a tethered pass. That's Roberts at the block, can't convert. Austin left side, she's fouled on the putback. Samaya Abdul-Rahim with that pass from about half court. Laid it in nicely there for Roberts right side. So after scoring that basket on that tethered pass, Ashby converts the two-point basket but comes back down and commits a rather aggressive foul that will send Miss Austin to the line. Unfortunately, Aaliyah Austin misses on that first attempt. The junior from Satsuma, Alabama, struggling a bit from the charity strike. This four of 15 coming into the ball game. And I believe they just called a violation right there, Charles. They sure did. So no opportunity for the second free throw. Benedict back the other way with about 38 seconds left. First period of play. Lead behind out front with a three-point effort. It's rattled and missed by Knowles. Basketball, Austin. Up the floor, McElroy. Down the floor, Layton. Trinity tried to stop. Couldn't hold the brakes. She commits to travel. I love the pass by McElroy. I, I wish he could have held off just a second so that Leighton didn't have an opportunity to make three steps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two is good. Yeah, two is all right. <laughs> You're within the bounds. 13 seconds left first half. Benedict, the first period. We'll sit there playing for this final shot. Good aggressive defense there by Roberts. Now six for the horn. Knowles works it left side. Got some space. Missed on the three-point effort at the buzzer. So we come to the end of the first period here. Chappie James, Tuskegee with a five-point lead. 17-12 over the visiting Lady Tigers of Benedict College. More Tuskegee basketballs just ahead on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. I'm Reginald Ruffin, your director of athletics, and you are watching the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Tuskegee! This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in store or online at TuskegeeUniversityShop.com. See you soon! Back live inside, Chappie James getting set for second period action. Tuskegee with a 17-12 lead over the Lady Tigers of Benedict College. SIAC basketball coming to you live from Tuskegee, Alabama. Charles Ward, Dwayne Walker with the play call. Glad you could join us on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Half court set now for the Golden Tigers on the weave. Kennedy foul on extended. Got the jumper airborne, missed on the shot. She'll try to chase it down right corner. Can't do so before it's picked up by Ashby and Benedict. 
stumbling, almost traveling with scales, but she got it free and got it out into the hands of Ashby, and Ashby took care of it from there with a three-pointer. Second three-point basket of the night for her. The afternoon, I should say, she's got eight points to lead all scores. Nice form by Ashby on the triple. McElroy, left side. Looking for a screen from Roberts. Now Abdul Rahim handles foul on extended. Tried to dump it down low and had it batted away. Way too deep inside, but they get the turnover right back at midcourt. Roberts with three, missed on the shot. So it's Benedict's turn now with the basketball. We're at 8.50 remaining first half. Tuskegee's lead has been cut to two. Whistles. So that's away from the basketball. They're going to call oh. a hold on Aaliyah Austin, Charles. Apparently a little too aggressive, says our official Whitney Mouse. Fine officiating crew this afternoon, Charles. Tyrell Johnson, Whitney Niles, who I just mentioned, as well as John McMillan. Half court set after the assessment against Aaliyah. It's her first personal. Taylor Christmas back out on the floor for Benedict. Out front, creasing the rim on that shot. Lawrence is up there as well. Aaliyah Lawrence, the freshman from Aiken, South Carolina, misses her first offering. Abdul Rahim backpedals out of the defense now. Over to McElroy. Ariel floater in the paint. Oh, yeah. A Mac, nicely done inside. Nice teardrop from McElroy. Five points tonight. Keep saying tonight, Charles. I'm in night mode for whatever reason. It's afternoon, a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, feels kind of an overcast day here in Tuskegee as Christmas got behind the defense, and Christmas comes a little late for her after the holiday, but she'll take it. That point on the inside. Speaking of Christmas, Charles, remind me to tell you what kind of weather I faced in Chicago earlier today. <laughs> Take away half court set. I can just about imagine, but we'll let you have that storyline in a minute. <laughs> well, while they head toward this time, the uh, exchange of the basketball in the corner, why don't you tell us about Chicago? Well, let's hold on a second, Charles. If we got, we, play is still going on here. We've got a two point game. Oh, we're, we're so intrigued by your Chicago story. Who cares? It's on the floor, <laughs> right? <laughs> Floater out front is off the mark. Basketball tapped around. It comes clear to McElroy and Tuskegee. We go to 725 left first half. Abdul Rahim, hard push left side. Had it taken away on the inside. Good defensive work of stripping that basketball was Kaya Evans, the senior. Charles, you got to give credit to the Benedict Tigers. Once again, that 2-9 record means nothing as it relates to conference play because now they're playing for real. Christmas down at the block. Pushes back out. And now they work it around the horn. Down in the corner, Knowles for three. Front of the iron, rebound, Abdul Rahim. She wants to run with it. Two on two basketball, lost control of it. And the basketball back over to the Tigers. That two on two there, ill-advised to try to push that one all the way through there, Walk. Yeah, she was a little out of control trying to dribble to her right to the strength of her dribble. Just got caught up in traffic there. Uh, the defender actually gave her a nice, uh, a, a subtle little nudge there to push her off balance, but there was no foul called on the play. Basketball over to Benedict with 6.50 left before the half, and they lead for Tuskegee's two, 19-17. Scales over to Christmas. Back out front as Evans handles. Philly King out on the floor now for Coach Wester and Tuskegee. Bounce pass at the block. Christmas straight to the glass, but missed on the shot. Had a good step inside on Manuel. Couldn't convert. Back the other way. Abdul Rahim right side. Samaya behind the back. Got some space. Tried to bank it in front. Missed on the shot. We go back the other way. Six fifteen left. First half. Maya Ashby reports back for Coach Rice.
top of the key. Taylor handles. Oh, Ashby, she's been deadly from behind the arc. Works it left side. Bobbitt trying to catch up with her and commits the foul. Just the first foul on her, Charles, drawing the starting assignment today in place of Abdur Rahim, who ironically enough is in the game right now. Abdur Rahim, Charles, started the first nine games of the season for the Golden Tigers until coming up with that sinus issue the other night. Talking to Coach Wester about that situation, she thinks that it really plays into Samaya's advantage as a player coming off of the bench. Christmas missed on that shot out front, but the loose basketball came inside to Nash, and Nash was fouled on a putback, so she'll yeah, be at the line. Bobby got caught trying to reach her hand into the cookie jar. That may be her second personal foul. Oh, but, oh no, they gave that to Abdur Rahim, Charles. I'm surprised by that. And Charles, you talked about Abdur Rahim coming off the bench to make contributions from that starting role. How about Jazz Emanuel? Jasmine started the first six contests of the season before coming off the bench. She had a little ankle issue that she fought through, but still in coming off the bench, quite effective. In fact, she's the team's best free throw shooter, Charles, over 90%. A junior from St. Louis, Missouri. At the free throw line, Tuskegee takes their, has it their lead cut to just one after the free throw by the Lady Tigers of Benedict. Philly King on the penetration left side. She's fouled. She'll be going to the line. They called up foul. And it's going to Charles be Evans called on that foul there, Walt. Sorry. Kaya, yeah, Kaya Evans. First personal foul on her. Just trying yeah. to look at your score sheet down here, looking for the name. <laughs> nah, you over here cheating, Charles. Look, cheat sheet. I know they call it cheat sheet, but you ain't got to look on my paper all the time. <laughs> well, if you put the name in the right place, <laughs> it would be easier to call the player. <laughs> they have these little boxes there where you put the name in, right? Yeah. I got a little too much going on. That's all, Charles. A little too much going on. That's story of your life, brother. Yes, <laughs> Hands all over the place. Half court set for Benedict. They can take a lead with a basket. Spinner inside the paint is off the mark by Nash. So Tuskegee will have the basketball. Trying to stretch their lead. McElroy. And Charles, let's not lose the sight that the Golden Tigers have gone cold in this second quarter. Malik lost that one in a half court set. A three second violation. So that either way, that basketball was going to belong to the Tigers of Benedict. Brittany Boland set to come back in, recognizing exactly what you're talking about, Walk, is that they just have been kind of stagnant offensively the last couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. She'll be back out on the floor after this timeout. 4.52 remains first half. Tuskegee with a 19 18 lead over Benedict. More basketball ahead on GTSN. What does education mean when you choose the top HBCU in Alabama? Um, so one of the things that's been most valuable for my experience at Tuskegee is being able to face challenges head on. Um, I can definitely say here I've learned how to be an advocate for myself, how to speak up and how to present myself in ways that can help me get opportunities to help me fix things that may not be right. And I think that's really just the we are back live here inside Chappie James. 4.52 left, first half of play. Benedict with the basketball. Chance for them to claim the lead with a basket this trip down the floor. Taylor has it behind, or Christmas that is, has it behind the arc. The right side, Scales on the move, dumped it to Christmas at the block, and her spinner's good, right side. Christmas now getting worked up, Charles. She's the leading scorer for this Benedict Tigers program, averaging correct. 12 points a game. Correct me if I'm wrong, Walker. Is this their first lead of this first half? It is, Charles, and that's something they're not necessarily accustomed to, meaning the Golden Tigers being behind. McElroy to Malik. Philly King guilty of the travel, left block. So back the other way, Benedict with the basketball on a one-point lead. 
Charles, on this, if, if I'm looking for more energy from the Golden Tigers at this point, they're sort of, I'm not saying sleepwalking through the game, but I just need to see a little more effort and tenacity. Started out that way for sure, but it's kind of wandered into a lackluster pattern here as this first half continues to expire. Trinity Layton just off the bench commits that foul coming onto the floor. Mm-hmm. John McMillan, one of our officials, calling her with the hands foul. They try to dump it inside to Christmas, and they throw it away. So the basketball back to Tuskegee. We're at an even four minutes remaining, first half of play. Boland will work it up the sideline, left side. This is where you look for Boland to take control here, Charles. They could use a basket for sure. She'll go right side all the way through. Floater to the glass. Missed on the shot. Leighton there, the freshman, trying to keep it alive, but it'll belong to the Tigers. Charles, I give Brittany Boland credit for recognizing what time it was. Her club has struggled to score. Um, two points, Charles, over the last seven or eight minutes. That's indeed, you're right. Been very slow in coming the baskets. She knew that that trip down just and had a, some space there on the shot, just did not convert. Jumper out front. That one is converted by Anaya Scales, the freshman from Charlotte. Second three-point basket for Scales, Charles. And now Benedict has their largest lead of the game. They lead it 23-19. Half court set manual over to Layton. Trinity free. McElroy, crip shot right side. Got it. They needed that one. Absolutely. Option one or option two, they're interchangeable. Ariel McElroy as well as Brittany Boland. She's got seven in this first half of play after that basket. 2.55 left first half. 23-21, Benedict with the lead and the basketball. Another three-point hoist out front off the mark this time by Scales. Here comes Boland. Brittany wants to push left side and now she'll have to pull back. Over to McElroy. Trying to get it to Manuel at the yes, block. She's there. Yes. Got to step on Christmas to yes. the rack and a whistle. Yes. That's what we want, Charles. Christmas can't believe it. But there will be a substitution right here. She'll come out right on this sequence. Doing exactly what you talked about, Walker. Attacking her. They'll pull her off the floor with a 2.30 left. She's picked up that second personal. Yes, sir. Charles, there's games within the game, Charles. And that's one of them. You want to get the other team's best player out as quickly as possible. And a very good free, shoulder, free throw shooter. I've mentioned over 90%. Check that, 83.3%. And I just gave her the announcer's jink. <laughs> Came in sixth in the conference from the free throw line. Shooting did manual. And one of two from the line this trip. There we go. Been very happy with that, her performance, though, Charles. Sure. From the free throw line. Big help to Coach Wester and Tuskegee early half of the season. Tuskegee trailing by a point now. Half court set for Benedict. They go down at the block. Johnson there whistles on the inside. Malik trying to catch up with that play. And Michaela not able to do so. Just a little late in the rotation there, Charles. So we'll have Anaya Ashby. Amaya Ashby, she has eight points tonight. She misses on the first attempt. She'll receive one more. 2.13 left first half. Series between these teams dates back to the early 2000s as Ashby missed them both from the line. Tuskegee trailing in the series overall as Leighton back the other way got an easy lay in behind the defense. Leighton did an extraordinary job of running the floor her first two of the ball game. And a miss on the half court set for Benedict. Here comes Abdur Rahim. Samaya, hard push right side. Head fake to the glass. Missed on the bank. But there underneath was Manuel with a rebound and a whistle down low. Manuel not laboring down the floor. She was down there quickly and swiftly and uh, able to get that follow up, Charles. And it'll stay with the Golden Tigers. Amaya Gallman back out on the floor now for Coach Rice. She will replace Lawrence in his lineup. Elena Roberts being summoned on the floor by Coach Wester. And she will replace Jasmine inside of the lineup. 
Talking about that series, Benedict leads the series overall, 23 wins, 16 losses to Tuskegee. This is the 40th meeting between these teams today. Entry pass inside to Elena, to the glass, left it a bit short, left side. Basketball over to Benedict. Last meeting was January of last year, about this date of the jumper out front by Ashby's off the mark and chased down in the corner by McElroy. Over to Samaya, who won at the sideline and got bumped out of bounds and a foul in the backcourt. Charles, I've seen a lot of emphasis this afternoon by Coach Shiante Wester in pushing the basketball up the court. Remember we talked about that early, trying to get these bigs in foul trouble as well as trying to get them out conditioning-wise. I see some huffing and puffing going on right now as Deja Harden in the middle laboring. Correction, not Deja Harden. That would be E. Maya Gallman. Leighton trying from outside, missed on that shot, and we're going back the other way. It appears inside position. Ashby had it on Malik. And Michaela trying to come over the back. I think they got it for the foul. Indeed, they did. So we'll okay. walk all the way down to the other side, Charles, and shoot a couple of free throws since the Golden Tigers are over the limit. You're allowed five fouls in each quarter before you get to the bonus. Maya Ashby, the senior, to shoot for the Tigers of Benedict. And Charles, taking a look at that, you know, that rule was changed a couple years ago. I think that actually benefited the game and, and has the game speed up a lot more. Yep, yeah, I agree with you. Certainly does. Leighton back the other way behind the defense again, and Trinity's got back-to-back -back baskets. That's been a trend, Charles. McElroy with her head up and finding Leighton streaking down the floor. So Tuskegee with less than a minute remaining in the first half. Back on top, 26-24. This is Knowles with the basketball. Now they work it across the perimeter to Scales. Trying to dump it down low. Look at Bobbitt with a good defensive work there denying Ashby the basketball. Play tough here. Last 10 seconds. On a push. Right side. Anaya. And that's a travel violation there by Nash and the Lady Tigers. She did exactly what you said, Walt. Yes, sir. Took three of them. Now, if I am Golden Tigers, I want to make sure we get off a quality shot here despite the press right here. Michael Roy and Abdul Rahim in the backcourt. Leighton and Roberts near the mid stripe, anticipating help on this press by Benedict. Watch, Watch Leighton here. Let's there go. Come, got it there inside the backcourt. Used a well to come get that basketball middle of the floor. Mm -hmm. Watch the trap. Went gotta right into it. Yep, got to stay out of there, Charles. Just like she's got to stay out of there. See That's what I mean? double there. Didn't get that call just in front of the Tuskegee bench. Coach Wester cannot believe it. Like <laughs> left side. The Wilson's on the inside. Looks on the like penetration Charles, left side, Dwayne. Looks like she kind of slid right in front of Coach Wester. Well, she, she's, <laughs> on coach, she's on the referee, Mike Millen, no end because it was right there in front of her. Yeah. Saw it from up here. She just clearly put two hands on it and bounced it. Yeah. And the referee, McMillan said, no, no, maybe we missed it. <laughs> hey, there's a humanness to it all, Charles. Indeed. First free throw was good. And the second good as well from the line by Nash. All right, so Charles, four points for Nash, 11.5 to play in this first half of play. Pressure once again. Look up. There's Bolin up the floor. They throw it away again. This time Ashby took it. Three seconds left. They may not get a shot off, but they'll be happy with that defensive stop on the Tuskegee end of the floor. So, Walk, we're right back where we started. Yeah, Two zero, periods zero. of play. Yeah. <laughs> Todd at 26. Take a look at some of these first half numbers before we go to the break. Free throws, which, which we always harp and talk about. What are the two categories we talk and harp about, Charles? We talk about free throws and turnovers. The reason why it's a tight, a tight score, look at that free throw percentage. Two of eight, 25%. Let's skip all the way down to them turnovers. 13 turnovers in that first half by Tuskegee. They're on pace to commit as many turnovers that Benedict does <laughs> average. on average, which is 27. Indeed, at 13, not where Tuskegee wants to be at the break. 
Tied at 26 with the Tigers of Benedict College. More basketball in your future on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. you love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy store Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Operation Manager, and you're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Tuskegee! This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon!
Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Yeah, we're we're excited to be here again with you guys today on the Golden Sport, uh, the Golden Tiger Sports Network, and uh, looking forward to a tough challenge tonight. Well, we, we've been in a lot of close games, so that helped us uh, down the stretch. Um, uh, I think we were down eight with two forty left, and we wound up just. Executing like we've done all year, we made our, we made our uh, free throws down the stretch, and we didn't turn it over. And um, we're going to need to play better today in order to win. We have we have a very resilient group. So the locker room, of course, they were very excited to finally get on the to win on the scoreboard, but. Um, we, we've, been, we've been practicing and, and approaching games the same way. We just uh, made a few more plays uh, on Thursday night. And, but we, like I said, we've been in a lot of tough ones. It was good for us to get a win because you start to get down and start to maybe doubt what, you, what you're doing every day in practice. And uh, our, our guys have not done that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, I want to give credit to uh, Benedict, uh, Benedict College and their, their staff and players. They're, they're eighth in the country. They're undefeated. We beat them at their place last year. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it's just a big game for us because it's the next game. You know, and we, we, don't, we didn't put any more emphasis on necessarily on beating them because they're, uh, they're that good. Um, we think that the SIAC has a lot of good teams. And uh, but today is going to be a good challenge for us. They're high flying. They're fun to watch, and um, they're very versatile, um, and and they're very deep. And they got I think they got eight or nine seniors. So uh, you know they're the opposite of us. And today we're just going to have to uh, beat them as beat them as a combined unit. Yeah, I, I think we're going to have to keep them off the offensive glass, and we're going to have to know personnel. They're shooting, uh, I want to say, maybe 40% from three. Um, and then the thing they do, we can't give them threes and drives. We can't give them. They feed off of transition points, threes, penetration, and offensive rebounding. If we can, if we can beat them out of two out of four of those things, we got a chance. We can't let them do three out of four. We do, they do three out of four or four out of four, we got no shot. But we're going to have to limit them in those four areas. I just want to win two out of four. Told my guys, let's win two out of four, and we got a chance down the stretch. <laughs> yeah, they're very good. See you. Appreciate you. All right. Hey, Tuskegee fans. I couldn't hear you. This basketball season. So I had to take this off so I, could he I couldn't hear you. And, of course, basketball so could, merch from your no, one I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. Tuskegee University Bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Okay. So, hey, Hey, Golden Tiger Nation, this is Coach Benji Taylor, and you're watching the Golden Tiger founder, Sports Network. Booker T. Washington said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors, and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. 
It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. Hey, Golden Tiger Sports Nation, this is Coach Benji Taylor, and you're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, Golden Tiger Sports, hey, Golden Tiger Sports Nation, this is Coach Benji Taylor, and you are watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. I'll do it one more time. I'm a perfectionist, just like y'all. Hey, Golden Tiger Sports Nation. This is Coach Benji Taylor, and you are watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. That was good. All right, all right. Listening, okay. Hey, Golden Tiger Sports Nation, this is Coach Benji Taylor, and you are listening to the Golden Tiger Sports Network. at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy store Everybody inside Chappie James Center on the campus of Tuskegee University. Getting set for second half action at the break. We're tied at 26. Golden Tigers of Tuskegee and the Lady Tigers of Benedict College. And walk as we look at some of these numbers from the first half. Fairly even, reflective of the score on the scoreboard. I don't know about fairly even, Charles. You look at the free throws. Benedict, they've doubled up the Golden Tigers. 50% uh, compared to 25%. That's a paltry number. The two-point situation, Golden Tigers at 42%, while from distance, three-point range, a very impressive 67%. Look at the rebounding story, Charles, 23-16. But the big story has to do with those turnovers. 13 turnovers committed by Tuskegee compared to eight by Benedict. 
get to some of the individual performances as we unfold this third period here inside the arena. Benedict with the basketball, their half of the floor. Running shot left side by Johnson's off the mark. That's Keegan back with the basketball. McElroy handles out front. Jasmine Manuel out on the floor. Brittany Bowman give and go inside to Manuel. Pushing down in the corner. This is Bobbitt. Back of the iron on a three-point shot. Tempo very important to begin this second half of play as we see that the Golden Tigers are, ext Golden Tigers are extending their defense. I like it. You want to get Benedict shooting deep into the shot clock. Half court set for the Lady Tigers. Out front with the basketball. This is Evans. Now to Johnson. Manuel popping out on defense of Taylor Christian Christmas, but she rolls right past the defense of Jasmine and got the lay in. Cannot give Christmas an uncontested route to the basket. You've got to get her out. Got to concentrate on getting her to the bench as early as possible. Same philosophy as first half. You want to run up and down the floor. You want to get her out. So Christmas with the first two of the second half. And we're going back the other way. Turnover gives it back over to Benedict. Christmas had four in the first half. To go with that two, she's got six overall. As Benedict retakes the lead, 28 to 26. There were two lead changes in that first half of play, and the score was tied twice. Half court set Christmas. Gives it over to Johnson. Now Evans. Down in the corner, Taylor Christmas again with the basketball. Floats the paint, aggressive to the left side, and they're going to get her for the offensive foul. Well, she just ramrodded her way through the paint there and ran over Jasmine Manuel in the process. Charles right on cue. We want to get Taylor Christmas out of there. She's the biggest threat for the Benedict Tigers. She's the leading scorer for the squad. What else does she contribute to this ball club? She, let's see. She's the best... Field goal percentage at 44%. She, she, what else does she do? She's the best free throw shooter at 86%. Leading blocker on the team or tied for first with seven blocks. Yeah, so that's who you want out of the game. So you got to give Coach Chiante Wester and this Golden Tigers defense credit. There's a game within the game, Charles. Three personals on her. Inside Aaliyah Austin to the glass, and she will go to the line just because of the absence of Christmas on the floor. They were able to get that basketball on the inside. Now, now with this bulge in the middle, middle, ordinarily Coach Rice would come back with Imaya Galman. Let's see if he does that, or will he continue to play small ball? But if you're the Golden Tigers, you want to continue to pound that basketball inside so that you can have a, a free throw, a free throw advantage, right? You want to try to get them to five fouls as quickly as possible to put yourself in the bonus. A game within the game. Austin's good on that first free throw, but missed on the second. Charles, she's been struggling from the free throw line tonight. She's just one of four. Benedict by a point and the basketball. Out front, Johnson with it, looking for a correction out front. That's Knowles with the space and got a three-pointer knocked down. She looked like a Johnson, all right. Vinny Johnson. Sure. From the <laughs> Detroit Pistons. Didn't Vinny wear number 15, if memory serves I me correct? Was. Yeah, sure was. McElroy, hard push on the lead behind. Nobody there. Basketball over to Benedict. Ariel expecting some backside coverage in terms of somebody breaking to the basket, but didn't get it. And the turnover sends it back to Benedict. They lead it 31-27. Kaya Jim. Evans, the senior, handles out front. Charles, believe it or not, that was Knowles' first basket of the game after going 0 for 5. There's a clutch basket right there. Sure, nice give and go there. Ashley Kaya the Evans. Assist and Evans got the easy basket. I believe that's the first time she scored tonight as well, Charles. Indeed it is. Even though her name is on the wrong place on the roster you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, partner. That's okay. I know it's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> well, you seven. might be right about that. <laughs> We're approaching seven minutes left in the third period. They go down at the block again. This time Ashby too deep under the basket. Throw it away. Malik has it. She walks right into a trap, but got it over to Bowling. Attack. Up top now with the three-pointer. Banked out front. Nicely done there by Bobbitt. 
Oops, it went in. That was her reaction, Charles. When it went through the bucket, she put her hand on her mouth as if to say, <laughs> eh, I didn't call it. But listen, she's got seven points in the game. That's all right. That money's good in the bank either way. Call it or not. Back the other way. They're trying another give and go left side. This time, McElroy catches up with the play and bats it out of bounds. Late in late out. Oh, I was going to say Leighton Abdurrahim checked back in. Get some new energy into the contest. Still, Charles, believe it or not, Golden Tigers trail it by one, 33-32. Bolin takes a seat, and so does Malik. 6.24 left in the third. Floater inside the paint. That's nicely done there by Johnson inside. That was all her, the freshman. Raven Johnson looking like the other Raven Johnson. Abdul Rahim, foul line extended, had it batted from behind. Now she's out on the floor with it. And I think Wester got a timeout. Coach Wester were able to get she, that timeout as they were struggling for it on the floor. Maya had... Zamaya just had enough control to be able to get that time out to bail Tuskegee out, trailing it 35 to 32 with 6.05 left in the third period. Utilities Board of Tuskegee is a proud sponsor of Golden Tigers basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. UBT puts the power in your hands to enjoy the things that matter most. Utilities Board of Tuskegee, purpose, progress, people. Walker had a chance to visit their new offices here in Tuskegee. Really? Yeah, they just built new a brand, brand new building. Yeah, New they office were, smell and everything? <laughs> everything. Okay. Yeah, didn't even, a lot of the pictures weren't, weren't even up yet. <laughs> and the general manager's uh, office, Gerald Long, talking. They said, well, where are we going to shoot? We shot some promos from over there. He said, well, this is my little cubby hole over here. But he said, I don't have all my pictures in here yet. <laughs> so we just went out into the foyer of a very nice building and shot the promos out there. They were previously in the municipal building, which is a couple of blocks down, but that's a real new state-of-the-art building they had there. And I asked him, I said, well, look, when I looked online, it said that you all started building in April of 2023, and you're already in the building? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's quick. <laughs> so, yeah. Quick turnaround. I told him, I said, yeah, I know that the utilities are probably good. I hope the building's going to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Charles, you need a quick turnaround from this Golden Tigers offense. They need to get going here. Bop, it's already hit a three-pointer last trip. This is a floater from the foul line. She missed there. Would have been exactly what you said there, Walk. Had she hit that one, it would have given a little bit of energy coming in after that timeout. Had some space, just not able to knock that one down. May have rushed that shot just a bit. No question. They will have another look, though. Basketball went off of Benedict. Entry pass, Leighton in the corner. Trinity back out front. Now tries to slide through the defense. Finn's got some space. Turnaround jumper missed it. Just rolled around the rim, Charles. Rim unkind. Coach Wester really high on Trinity, saying she is the strongest player on the roster for the Golden Tigers. Just going to have to get her more reps, the freshman from Miami. The more she starts to see or condition play throughout this first campaign, she's going to be a real good player for Tuskegee. Travel violation there by the Tigers of Benedict. We go back the other way. Charles, you know, I started to say about winning being contagious because coming up after the women's game, we've got the men playing, and we know about the prowess of the Benedict football team, and I said, man, it, it kind of transfers over to the basketball team, and well, you brought up a little historical point about this women's program at Benedict. Oh, yeah, sure. Both women and men's basketball Really the call, calling card for Benedict for years and years as Leighton's guilty of a travel violation there inside the paint. You take a look at that Benedict sideline with James Rice, the head coach of Benedict. He is one of the premier coaches in the SIAC. Three-time SIAC coach of the year and perennial power within the SIAC, the winning is coach of the women's side in their program along with Fred Watson, who is now at Miles College. It seemed like every year they were just going back to back as champions, both of them winning, men and women, winning on either side. <laughs> just a real dynamic duo up there in Columbia. They were volleyballing championships back and forth on the sure. basketball court. <laughs> sure. And we were talking about this in all honesty early on today as Abdul Rahim's got some space foul line extended. That's her spot on the floor. She knocks that down. You got to give full throat credit to Willie Washington, the athletics yes. director at Benedict, 
for what he has weathered in terms of building that program. He was there when there was some lean years, certainly for football, mm -hmm. and really made the commitment the entire administration did to building that program the way that they built basketball in the past. So congratulations to the Benedict overall. And Charles, they, they've had a magnificent two-year run at it. Of course, there's been some transition at Benedict with the football program with Coach Chanis Berry moving on to, well, I can't say moving that far. Right, right. It's, only, <laughs> it's right up the road. <laughs> Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, with South Carolina State, we wish him nothing but the best. Indeed. Uh, glad to see him able to make that move. A lot of moves going on now in HBCU football based upon what happened this past season. And uh, just congratulations to the coaches who have other opportunities as a result of the things that they've done. Thinking primarily of FAMU in terms of Willie mm -hmm. Simmons down there making that yep. move to Duke after leading FAMU to the national title. Oh, and listen, how about here at Tuskegee? Yeah. Look at the football season they had this year. Of course, fell a little short, suffered a disappointing loss to Albany State towards the end of the season. Or at the end of the season, excuse me that allowed Albany State to, to get into the SIC championship game. But Reggie Ruffin, who's now the athletic director, left things in very good hands with Aaron James, who you know what he did as a player here. Did, yeah, sure. All he did was go 42-5. and five. His <laughs> career record is the yeah. starting quarter. Now, no, don't trust me. If you don't trust, ask him. He'll tell no, you no, himself. I know. If he's <laughs> listening now, you got the number right, he won't bother you. But if you got it wrong, you <laughs> But listen, but. But the same thing here at Tuskegee, where they are fashioning themselves as a leader. More football victories than any uh, D2 program in history. That's, that's phenomenal. And uh, I'll tell you what I like, Charles, from an economic standpoint. They're going to start charging as of next week, January 13th. They're going to charge admission unless you're a student athlete, which I like. Yeah, just a student in general, if you got your proper ID. Line jump, dry jumper from the free throw line by Austin is good. But here's yeah. the thing, Charles. There is a value in Tuskegee athletics. And the community, parents, relatives, who's ever involved with the program or into the program, we need to contribute and be a supporter of this program. And how do you do that, Charles? You do it coming out and you do it with dollars as well. That's exactly right. And this is an opportunity that you're really getting a benefit for the dollar you're giving. You get a chance to watch a quality basketball program play at home. Right now we're watching the defending SIAC champions and with a new coach now in Siante Western and what a fantastic job she has done taking over the reins with an overall record of 7-3. and three. And listen, no one's going to no one's gonna feel sorry for uh, the Golden Tigers. They're going to be the target of all the SIAC teams moving forward. I'm glad you had a chance to reference the fact that Coach Western in her first year taking over that program and doing a good solid job as Leighton handles out front. Trinity pushes left corner. Bobbitt with a jumper back of the iron. Rebound Austin right side to the glass. Missed on the first. Got her own rebound and got yes. the second to fall. Yes sir Charles. She's really applying herself now. She's got five. She scored the last couple of field goals for the Golden Tigers. And with 3-0-3 remaining here in the third period Tuskegee up by three. Half court set for the Tigers. Evans has it, now gives it out to Gallman. Gallman to Nash. Nash challenges left side. Austin denied. Abdul Rahim tried to save it at the baseline. Good defensive work there by Tuskegee. Gallman got the basket, though. Gallman. Cannot fault the Golden Tigers there. Played tough defense that trip. No, Gallman finally gets on the board. Battling tough inside. Now Bobbitt attacks the basket. That's what we want, Charles. That's foul number five. Not for her personally, but for them as a team. So what that means, as we talked earlier, Charles, it puts the Golden Tigers in the bonus situation for the rest of the quarter. So they'll have two minutes and 30 seconds to stack points at the free throw line. Gallman picks up her second. And that's Bobbitt at the line to shoot for Tuskegee. And Charles, as the, girls, as the ladies uh, line up here, and that shot is on the way is good. With the foul count now 5-0, to zero, there seems to be this, this kind of situation where you have to play a disciplined defense if they're the Golden Tigers because the natural response would be to kind of, I'm not going to say even the, 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 the foul score up, 
but you're not going to be as lax. You're going to call it tight because Bobbitt. of that discrepancy right now. Bobbitt got them both from the line that time. Tuskegee with a 40-37 lead. Nash with a hard push left side. Now back out front and across the floor to Kyler Daniels. Shot clock at 10 as they work it inside to Goldman. Back out to Ashby. She's on the move. Whistles. Samaya <laughs> Abdul-Rahim tried to <laughs> swat that basketball away. I think they got her up for the reach in. What did you say, Charles? You said no. there's a foul called on Tuskegee? <laughs> just, just what you were talking about. Huh? Everybody see, looks see, back at see, unison see, at the scoreboard. See, let's see, let's see, commit see, one. See you, don't want to, see, you didn't want to give me credit on that, Ward. <laughs> just want to make sure that the call was made before we start handing out accolades up here. But you're oh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but there's another foul right, right there. there. Let's see who yeah. they got this one on. They call it on Bobbitt. I think they called both of those, this one and the one before on Sinead. Yeah. And Charles, she's got three personal fouls now. Yeah. Yep, she does. Back the other way on the transition, though. There's Bobbitt, and she got a basket. Oh, she recovered from those two personal yeah. fouls by scoring two points of her own. There you go. Traded two fouls with two points. And for Bobbitt, she's in the double digits out in the steal by Samaya Abdur-Rahim. Working, protecting that basketball. And look at the spin. Oh, yeah. She finished, Charles. That's the key point of emphasis right there. Through the contact as we get a look at the replay. Look at that rim kind. Oh, yeah. Everybody's just hanging up there watching it. And that one falling right through the hoop. So Abdur Rahim to the line to try to cap off a three-point play as Taylor Christmas comes back out for Coach James Rice. Ashby takes a seat. Jasmine Manuel out on the floor for Coach Wester and Tuskegee. So right now it's Bobbitt. Maya Abdurrahim, Jasmine Manuel, Brittany Bolin, and Ariel McElroy. Now Christmas has three fouls. Are we correct on that? We are. And Abdurrahim knocks down that free throw. So what do you want to do? You want to attack her. Get her out. Get her fourth so she can sit out the rest of the third and a majority of the fourth. Yeah, obviously Coach Rice thinking that he can't let this thing get too far out of hand as they try to dump it down low, and Jasmine's there to take it away. Over to Samaya, going to leave it behind for McElroy. McElroy, top of the key to Manuel. Jasmine turns, squares, working on Christmas, going right to the rack. Missed on the shot, though. She recognized, Charles, yeah. what she needed to do, saw who, who was on her, and went right at her. And waited for the floor, clear it out, so she could get that one-on-one. -on -one. Very smart. Back the other way, whistles down low. They have penetration right side. I believe that's Daniels, yeah. And she was fouled by Ariel. So and, Charles, and Charles, speaking of Daniels, let me just try to tie this all in together, Charles. We talked about supporting Tuskegee basketball and talked about the fans coming out, friends, family. How about the former players that are in the house today? As I look off to my right, I see a, uh, is that Shelly? Shelly Daniel, player from last year at home that graduated in, I want to say, finished up in 22, perhaps playing overseas. Free throw is good. Can't quite make out where you are <laughs> in the audience right now. But Let's your see, eyesight's better than mine. <laughs> you, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get our cameras down there in just a second. How about that? Both free throws are good at the line for Benedict. Charles, did you see Kyla Daniels look over at the crowd? <laughs> back the other way. Remmers off by Manuel, but back out to McElroy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amac with the bomb. Throw away in the backcourt. Basketball back to Tuskegee. Oh, she's got a dirty dozen tonight, Charles. She's got 12 points thanks to two. Three-point buckets. Tuskegee up now 47-39 with 40.8 seconds left in this third period. I think this is their largest lead of the ball game at this point, Walk. It is. McElroy in trouble oh. there. That had disaster written all over it from the entry pass. Nash had it tapped, and here comes Tuskegee. Good defensive effort. That end of the floor. Brittany trying to cap it off here with a basket after the good defensive work. 24 seconds left in the third. 
Abdur Rahim out behind the arc. Now 16 to shoot for Tuskegee. Samaya, the defense popped out on her, and that'll be a defensive foul. Aliyah Lawrence, the freshman, is trying to catch up and get out front of Samaya. She commits the foul. Yes, sir, Charles. That means we're shooting. And Coach Rice is having to go to his bench to try to reserve, to try to spread these fouls out. Well, we talked about it before. He is no uh, stranger to having a deep bench year in and year out, and he is very comfortable using his entire roster of players. That's how he's accumulated so many wins because he had so many had so many weapons over the years. Just right now, he's got a young bunch at the free throw line for the Golden Tigers. Samaya Abdul Rahim, the senior, knocks down that first free throw. <laughs> Sets for the second of two. Now got them both from the line. Right now got Tobias. So for Abdur Rahim Charles, he continues to contribute. She's got nine points tonight, Charles. 49-39 as Jazz Emmanuel checks out. And I'm going to let you handle the substitute, Charles. <laughs> Thank you. We haven't called her name much. <laughs> you said thank you. Is that what you said? <laughs> haven't called her name much this year, but I'll say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jara Chang out on the floor. Ashby, three-point shot. Missed on that one. Abdul Rahim with the rebound. That is the way the third period will end. With Tuskegee claiming its largest lead of the ball game. They lead it 49-39 over the Tigers of Benedict College. TNT Fireworks, proud sponsor of Tuskegee basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. TNT Fireworks, America's best-selling brand of and the largest distributor of consumer fireworks. Glad to have them as a part of our sponsor team in our coverage of Tuskegee. And as we celebrate those youngsters across the floor here, Walker, inside Chappie James Arena, I know you were up over the weekend of a celebration of your own. <laughs> yes, sir, Charles. Look at that picture in the lower left third in Chicago land. That's the snow from this morning. But, hey, I wanted to send congratulations out to my daughter, Christina Walker, celebrating her 22nd birthday. And, unfortunately, Charles, I couldn't be at her game this afternoon in Missouri. In Saint, uh, I'm sorry, in Chicago. Why? Because I'm here watching the Golden Tigers play the double dip. Happy we have a picture. Birthday, yeah, let's, do we have a shot of the birthday girl? Let's see. Is there a shot of the birthday girl? Oh, he didn't get one. Okay. That's okay. That That's cake will right. suffice. That cake will suffice. Yeah. It will. Hey, that cake was good too, Charles. Oh yeah, I noticed you didn't. You couldn't get any back on the plane. No, huh? I, listen, <laughs> listen. I got it from you didn't Whole try. Foods. I got a quarter sheep cake, a, 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 a cake from Whole Foods. Well, I think there's a Whole Foods right up in Auburn. <laughs> we can get some paint and put 22 on that one and go to work. <laughs> Happy birthday, Christina. Oh, so <laughs> proud of you and celebrating that 22nd. Yes, Walking, sir. You barely look 22 yourself, man. Gosh. Well, well thank you, Charles. It, family. <laughs> Charles, it was cool, man. All of her teammates were there. It, uh, it, it, was, it was a beautiful experience. She, she had no idea I was there, so it was the surprise, the surprise element that made it uh, very special. Perfect. Thanks for sharing that with us, and thanks for making your way back for the contest this afternoon. Double bonus for us. McElroy, left corner, Emmanuel, rings it good for Tuskegee. Oh, yeah, you got to love it when the bigs are involved. Jazz That's Emmanuel. Said, Go ahead, Charles. Wanted to work on that in the offseason walk about not having to play so consistently with a back to the basket. There in that corner found some range with a nice mid-range jumper. And again, Charles, I want to commend... I want to commend Jazz Emanuel, Charles. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He's got to look in your picture. James Rice, not happy. Look at him. Go to the bench. He smashes his hand on the chair, grabs the chair. He is not a happy man right now. Look at talk, him. I was talking with him before the ball game. And what we're looking at right now. <laughs> look at him. He could, this team could be 30 <laughs> points up, and you'll still see the same kind of reaction from him. And look we were the, talking about it. I said, yeah. Coach, you know, you do that when your team is up. He's like, yeah, Charles, but this is really, really real now, right? But, uh, but what I want you to see, Charles, though, Charles, look at how the girls are together, though. I want you to talk. This talks about decorum and being a team. 
you, you succeed as a team, you go through struggles as a team, but most importantly, you're a team. So there's more to this message than what you see. But you look at the way he, he's reacting now, he is just not frustrated, but he knows he's in a situation where they've got to start gelling. And it's just you know, disappointing to have to deal with that at this stage in the season. But he knows that's what he's got to go through because they don't know him and he does not know very much about them in terms of players and they're just going through that feeling out process. Well, but on the other side, when you get a look at the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee, Charles, they've got a first-year coach, and there, there are some getting used to. And I remember earlier this year you talked about what Coach Siante Wester did when she got to this program. Yeah, one of the differences Coach Rice was talking about was, yeah, she's first-year coach, but she has a lot more to work with. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't know what he's got at this stage. Half court set after the timeout. That's good banter about those the differing huddles there. <laughs> Christmas behind the arc, missed on that shot. Basketball over to Tuskegee. Just underway here, fourth period of action. Abdul Rahim for three. Back of the iron on the shot. Long rebound comes clear to Knowles and Benedict. They push it back up the floor to Christmas. To the glass right side, nicely done over Arlia Austin. Christmas, excellent job in not wasting any time getting up with her move. She had the defender on her back, went up with it. Even though there was some contact, no foul call. She did a nice job of getting the ball up and in the basket. McElroy out front, popping out manual for the basketball now. Jasmine surveys. Foul on extended, not a bowling. Britain quiet after that first electric start. Abdul Rahim stops, pops, pops, and drops for Tuskegee. But that's just the thing, Charles, as Abdul Rahim scores her 11th point. They've got so many other weapons, Charles, that play key roles when maybe someone doesn't have to score all the time. And you look at this, we're talking about this first year program under Coach Wester in terms of her impact on the program. Won their first ball game, lost one to West Georgia, and now finding themselves at the point now maybe going three straight in terms of back to back to back wins here as you get into conference play. Definitely a good sign that this team in terms of players being comfortable with the coaching staff and vice versa. And we were kind of joking about it, Walk, when we had the uh, impact belt that uh, yeah, she gives Yeah, I saw Brittany wearing that, yep. having that. <laughs> but I think that really drives the players, too, just listening to Brittany's comments about it. She was like, yeah, I got it last uh, on Thursday, and I'm not going to give the thing back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know who wants it? <laughs> Bobbitt wants it again. Sure. <laughs> Tonight, Bobbitt, she had it earlier this season after the Columbus State game where she hit a couple of late baskets to win ball games, to help win ball games for this Golden Tigers program. And as she talked about, the impact player is not necessarily the one with the biggest stat sheet. Christmas going under the defense and a foul call. It's just that player that has the impact that really kind of helps change the demeanor of the game or drive the demeanor of the game based upon what they do on the floor. Yeah, Charles. And, go ahead, Charles. And on that play, I was going to say that Whitney now is making the call there for Christmas as Christmas goes to the line looking to score her... Tenth point of the game, so that's nine right there. She scored all of her points from the field so far, but she's the leading scorer for this Benedict Tigers team, averaging 12 points per contest. Second of two, spinning is good for Christmas. So that puts her at 10, 744. Really, speaking of Christmas, child, I don't recall you getting anything for me for Christmas. Well, you know where it is? It's on the same <laughs> aisle of the Whole Foods store where the pancake is. <laughs> When you get that cake, just look yeah. behind it. It'll be yeah. your gift behind there. Hey, Charles, real quick. Do you still have your Christmas tree up? Uh, New Year's? Honestly, be honest. I'll be honest. We didn't put up a tree this year, but we do have decorations around the home, and they're still up. You still got them up? Still got them up. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I, I think my wife's waiting on me to take them down. <laughs> but we got to get off. <laughs> she'll be waiting till summer. <laughs> <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be waiting till summer. Well, Trinity Layton wasn't waiting. She got that basket for Tuskegee. That's our sixth point of the ball game. You started to say she'll be waiting for an eternity. <laughs> oh, oh, good. I'm glad I got to it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 705 left. Somebody's going to accuse you of having too much fun, man, <laughs> on this broadcast. Late and again, head fake spins. This time shot rejected by Johnson, but it comes right back to Trinity. Samaya, she's on the move right side. The floater by Samaya. She likes that spot on the floor. The results, once again, 
Yes, sir, Charles, and she made the decision to pull up with Christmas standing her ground, walling up right there in the middle. Here comes Christmas pushing left side at the block, too deep underneath. Basketball over to Vanderbilt, quickly up the floor. Leighton runs the floor, runs it down, and got the lead. Charles, she's got three touchdown receptions so far today. Yeah, Aaron Might James. have been her fourth. <laughs> Come get her, Aaron James. <laughs> right. Basketball partially deflected. Jasmine Manuel just an outstanding job of hustle on the defensive end for Tuskegee. And Charles, I'm going to emphasize once more, when Benedict has this big lineup out, you want to run. And that's what they're doing on transition. I can't recall this squad this season, Charles, running this much in transition. Yeah. And part of it is I think they're starting to get to know each other more and they can create that kind of game yeah. situation. Yeah. And Charles, you know, under first-year coach Siante Wester, you're trying to find the identity for this ball club. And I think, for the most part, we see what it is. For example, 6-14 to play. They're up 13. No surprise. They remain calm, collected, and go out and execute. That's what I've noticed the past four or five ball games, that, 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 they're, that they're comfortable with what they can do and confident in what they can do to close out ball games. I think you're absolutely right. You reflect back on the early part of the season, it just that confidence was not there as a group, but it's starting to develop more and more as the season progresses. And this shot there by Ashby. Bowling, half court set. Over to Abdul Rahim. Samaya slides right side. In traffic, batted away. It's loose on the floor. Brittany runs it down. Under six left now. Down at the block. Malik beat the defense. To the glass, missed on the shot. Good recovery on the inside there by Raven Johnson to contest for Benedict. Fans looking for a foul on that play, Charles, including our youngsters right there behind the ball. Johnson out front, now over to Christmas. Now oh, this is Nash, lost her dribble. <laughs> Ashby pushes a three, front of the iron. They were hitting those three-pointers early in the ball game, Benedict was. But as you reference, walk up and down the floor, up and down the floor makes the arms weak as well. What's going on in the corner there? Let's see. Oh, lost ball. Yeah, well, Michaela Malik was down there in the well. <laughs> John McMillan had the basketball. He waited right. on Michaela to come back out on the floor. Wow. Christmas able to take advantage on the inside. Got an easy lay-in. Got to tell you, Charles, I see why Christmas leads this team in so many categories. She has excellent footwork. She's a solid ball player. Here's Malik at the baseline. Way deep under there. Missed on the shot. Got the positioning down, though, just too far under. They're going to try to get right back into Christmas here because she's got the hot hand. They go left side instead. Bobbling it on the way to the rack was Johnson, and she lost it. Attack. Samaya. So one on three, <laughs> almost trying to take it by herself there. McElroy takes a three, drains a three for Tuskegee. <laughs> yes, sir, Charles. One, two, three. Three three-pointers for McElroy so far tonight, today. Christmas answers with her own. Hey, man, I'm impressed by this young lady. Man, I am almost thoroughly impressed. Pole there, wasn't it? <laughs> Jeez. Charles, she's got 18 points tonight to lead all scores. And Charles, she hasn't played a whole lot of minutes, but she's been very, very efficient. Yeah, even now when she came back in the, in the second half with the three personals playing under control, and as you indicate, getting her space on the floor offensively. Exemplary, exemplary as we get a look at both huddles on the split screen. Producer Eric Tabor. Oh, Flexing man. his muscles oh, yeah, here. I see, I see, I see, wow. I see. Doing that with a terrible toothache, too. Imagine what the guy could do at 100%, right? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> All right, Charles, let's go ahead and get a little reset here. Four minutes, 30 seconds to play. We're in the fourth stanza. Golden Tigers leading it by 11 with the basketball. Trinity Layton to inbound it. She's certainly one of the candidates for that impact belt in this ball game. She'll handle across the timeline, left side. Good opportunity for her, too, 
We'll pick that up in a second as McElroy handles the basketball, backpedaling. Out of that corner, out of that spot. Samaya Abdul-Rahim works it right side, hop step by her, float her to the glass, and she'll be going to the line. Her recognition so far this afternoon, Charles, has been wonderful. If she needs to pull up, she'll pull up. If she needs to penetrate to go all the way to the basket, she'll do that. If she has to find some middle ground, she'll do that. And you know what the beauty, I think in terms of what Coach Wester is happy about with her coming off the bench, meaning Zamaya, is that she does not have to carry a lot of that burden of running that full offense. When right. she comes out, she, in most cases, in ability to get into a shooting mode a, a lot quicker because she doesn't have to deal with all of the other on-court responsibilities. Right. And Charles, so go oh, ahead, Charles. Go. You're good. I was going to say, and something I like about what's going on with this Golden Tigers program is that they're utilizing basically all of the players going very deep into the bench. And if you look at some of the successful teams that are out there, and we're going to look at a, a top rank, a top 10 team coming up after this in <laughs> the Benedict Tigers men's team. They're ranked number eight in the country, Charles, but they, they go deep in their bench. Yeah, excited to see you had talk to Coach Taylor about what they think they're going to have to do to slow that bunch down from Benedict. Outside with a quick jumper there by Nash. It's off the mark. Rebound to Brittany Boland. And I'm glad to hear you say that point about the depth of the Tuskegee bench because that's the point I was going to try to make with Trinity Layton. She is getting an opportunity here to handle that basketball a lot more the length of the floor. Yep. As a freshman, she's getting those reps at that spot knowing that next year two, year three of her play here at Tuskegee, she's going to have a lot of that responsibility. Seven to shoot now. Boland rolls right side, head fake, got it to the rack. Had to force it, but she missed on that shot. And here comes Benedict back the other way. Nash handles, goes all the way to the rack, left side, missed on that shot. Nash has been quiet, Charles, since the first half. Alana Roberts, the junior, clears for Tuskegee. We go down to 3.03 remaining in the contest. Tuskegee with a comfortable 13-point lead at the block. Roberts beat the defense, got the lay-in. That's an assist by... Uh, Abdul Rahim nicely timed by her on the pass. Oh, yeah, and Atlanta Roberts gets on the board for the first time. She's the product from California, transferred over. Half court set for Benedict. The largest lead of the ball game for Tuskegee on their way to their third consecutive win. Out front, long range jumper. Evans off the mark. Boland clears another rebound for Tuskegee. Up to McElroy. Ariel quickly across the timeline. Left side. Foul line extended. They let her have it. She tried to let them have it on the jumper, but she missed. Back across the timeline as we go down to 205. All right, Charles. This is where you want to work these possessions, work these possessions, slow the play down, and you want to utilize a majority of the shot clock. Got to get it over though, as she did in McElroy. Under two minutes remains, whistles on that play. McElroy seeing a, an opportunity to get to the basket and draw a foul, she does just that. So we'll have a two shot foul coming up. And there you can look at Brittany Boland in the middle of that huddle showing leadership. I love it, absolutely love it. Jang will check back into the game for her second stint, wearing jersey number 15. Nice to see her in the contest. She's a real vibrant young lady. Puts in the extra work before game time to get better. And Charles, at the end of the day, it's all about getting better, and we're going to see some new faces. We got Kylie Brown set to check into the game, wearing jersey number five tonight. Kylie Brown, a six foot one inch sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama. McElroy at the free throw line. That attempt is up and it's no good. Charles, if there has been some uh, uh, area of improvement needed with this Golden Tigers program here tonight, it would be the free throw shooting as McElroy, McElroy misses a couple of free throws there in succession. As we go back the other way, with less than two minutes remaining, Bolum comes away with a steal. Up the floor to McElroy. A-Mac left side, try to leave behind there for Jane near the free throw line. 
Now back to Brittany. Lead behind. Jara, jumper. Got it. Yes, sir. Jane gets into the scoring column. <laughs> yes, Miss Jane. Yes, yes. Do your thing, Miss Jane. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> Put it on the board. Back, lead behind, jumper there by Nash is off the mark, but the rebound put back on the left side by Scales misses, and a whistle. So Charles tonight, or this afternoon, I should say, eight different Golden Tigers have scored tonight. As Philly King set to check in the ball game for Brittany Bowling. Yeah, Brittany with a fine performance, started out hot on the floor but then converted a lot of that to her energy defensively for Tuskegee in this basketball game. Mm-hmm. Excellent point, Charles. Second of a four-game set here from Chappie James. Men to follow here. And then we're back here next Saturday when the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State visit. And we conclude the four-game set the following Monday with the Marauders of Central State. And Charles, programming note for that Kentucky State game, that's going to be a nationally televised game on HBCU Go. So we invite the Golden Tigers fans to come out. Let's represent. Let's have a good showing. Indeed. All the students will be back by that time. They want to pack the house. And let folks out there know that Tuskegee is the place to be. And Charles, these young ladies deserve it. Defending SIAC champions right now. Once they put this one in the books, it'll be eight and three overall, and they are worthy of that support. They're taking care of business on the court, and we want to make sure that we support them. And I don't know for anybody out, out there that had a chance to watch our ball games on Thursday night here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. That men's program showing all the promise in the world, coming up with a big win in overtime. Mm -hmm. They'll have a big challenge ahead of them against the Tigers of Benedict, who are undefeated and nationally ranked, and we'll see how they fare next. Jang pushes Abdul Rahim for three. Oh, yeah. Samaya's just got the range here. <laughs> Charles, that's what you want to see, and she's been so consistent tonight. She has really been lighting it up. Boy. You just think that maybe it's happenstance that she had that sinus problem that got her coming off the bench. One hand floater is off the mark by Scales. Run out again. Here's Samaya up the floor. Four on one bounce pass. Right corner with the jumper. Brown trying to convert his loose on the floor. It just rolls right there to <laughs> Samaya. Like, hey, oh. that's how it's been tonight for her. Sure, right. Charles, a season high 18 <laughs> points tonight for Anaya Abdur Rahim. Nice job by her. Three-pointer out front. That's off by Lester. Here comes Samaya. Three-on-one basketball. She'll Coach is saying, hold up. <laughs> yeah, she will. And the run out by Tuskegee is an impressive thing to watch. They win at 73-52, where we were tied at intermission. But they just took off in this second half. Really got every element of the game running the way that they wanted and just ran away here against the Tigers of Benedict College. So the Lady Tigers are at Tuskegee now will go to eight and three on the campaign and they will go to four and two, or five and two that is, an SIAC plea. So eight and three overall and five and two in conference play. And for the Lady Tigers of Benedict, they stuck on number two for quite a while longer. They go to two and 10 overall and fall to one and six in conference play as Tuskegee takes care of its business here on the home floor, 73-52 for their third consecutive win for the Golden Tigers and Tuskegee. We will take a break here inside Chappie James and you can see on your screen what's coming up next. The undefeated Tigers of Benedict and the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee in basketball action. Take a time out back with more here on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Golden Tiger fans, I'm Gerald Long, General Manager of the Utilities Board of Tuskegee. Thank you for watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Go Tigers! Hi, I'm Jordan Benson, the Sports Information Director at Tuskegee University, and you're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. <laughs> 